Hey everybody, I am back with another update for you. Um, I haven't posted here in a couple weeks, but um, a couple weeks ago I posted about my experience with an eczema flare-up, and eye inflammation that I've had since March. If you missed that video, you can watch it. I've linked it in the description. But So I'm not going to go into the entire story of what's been happening, but basically since March, I had gotten sick and I have had a flare-up of eczema and my eyes have been inflamed ever since. We've been trying to figure out what's been going on. So I had seen my general doctor, I saw an ophthalmologist, I saw a dermatologist, and finally he referred me to an allergist. So that's kind of where we are today. Um, I had said that I had seen my allergist and she recommended I get patch testing. So this video today is an update on the experience with my patch testing and the results of it, and then where I'm going from here. So this video might take a little while. So if you're not interested in this, feel free to skip it. My grocery haul will be up next week. So just bear with me. So patch testing, if you've never heard of it, it is where they put like all sorts of different patches, either it's usually on the back. Some people get it like on their arms or whatever. But with me, I had like five long strips and each strip had 10 patches. So I got a total of 50 different patches on my back. And each patch has a different type of allergen on it, like a concentrated amount. So I'm supposed to keep it on for a couple days and then I'll get it taken off. And then I'll go back again the next day to see what else has popped up. So the idea with these patches is that if you are allergic to any of those substances, your that area will like flare up, it'll get a rash, it'll itch, whatever. So that was just to see if I was allergic to any of those things. And then they gave me, this is the list of all the 50 different allergens they tested me for. So let me start from the beginning of it. So on a Tuesday, I went in and got the patches on. And that process only took like two minutes. That was super simple. And um, the, the nurse was telling me as she was putting them on, like, you know, some people feel a little bit itchy, but a lot of people don't feel anything from this during the couple of days. So um, when I got them on, she said I couldn't shower and I couldn't work out. I really couldn't get my back wet at all between Tuesday and Friday. So I prepared myself for this ahead of time. I prepped a light work week. I planned on basically staying inside for a couple of days and not doing much. So I got them on on Tuesday morning and probably a couple hours in, I felt an intense itching on like the bottom left side of my back and it did not let up. And I'm like, so there, there's got to be something that I'm allergic to that's right there. And you know, you can't scratch it. I took some allergy medicine beforehand, so that probably helped a little bit. But I would say that one area was where the most itching was. I felt a little bit of itching like throughout, but the worst part was on my lower left side. So I went through all of Tuesday like that. Um, it's kind of hard to sleep on Tuesday night. Wednesday was a whole lot better. I The itching kind of went away. I didn't feel it quite as much. Now, if I touched that area, then yeah, it would start to like itch again. But Wednesday was pretty okay. Thursday, Thursday morning, I went and got the patches taken off. And from there, um, there were two nurses in there and they looked at each of the spots. She, she took a permanent marker and kind of marked some areas. And then they marked on that chart to see which of the areas had flared up. And so the part that was really itchy, <laughs> They said that is a definite positive. There are some areas that there, they were like, well, that one could be a positive. So let's put a question mark by it. Um, this one's definitely positive. That one down there is totally positive. So they were walking out and didn't really tell me what that was. I'm like, hey, out of curiosity, what was that one allergen that tested positive? So she showed me, I'll go more into detail on that later, but I did a little bit of research on it. And then I was supposed to go back the next day, Friday, because some of these allergens take more than a couple of days to appear. So I went back on Friday and saw the nurses again. And I think there were a couple more spots that had flared up. So they marked those on the charts. 
And then they went to go make some copies of the different allergens and like the, the, the packets of all the information. And by this point, I was just about done. Like I said, I couldn't shower, I couldn't work out, and that threw off my entire routine. And when my routine is thrown off, it kind of throws me into like a, just a depression of sorts. So I was just like, I just want to get out of here. I want to go take a shower. I just want to feel better. So the allergist came in and said, yeah, so we found like six or seven different allergens on you. So he gave me like all of these little packets. These are papers that have the names of the allergens and then what you can find them in and even different names for them. So now I'm going to go through the list of allergens that I have and we'll kind of go from there. So the first one, which is the biggest one. Now I can't even begin to pronounce it correctly. I'll throw it up here, but it is methylisothiazolinone. Maybe I got it somewhat right. So there is this one. And then there is one that was pretty much just like it. It's like the exact same name, but there's a chloro in it as well. So for short, I've seen it as MI and MCI. So I'm just going to say it like that for, for the rest of this video. So MI, it's a preservative and it's found in a lot of personal hygiene products like shampoo, lotion, um, let's see, body washes, hand soaps, all sorts of household cleaners. Um, and then it has like a list of other names for the MI. So it gives me a list of all the other names. Um, so that was those two. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll talk about more. I'll talk more detail here in a minute. Uh, the next one is Bacitracin and it's an antibiotic used in like general wound care. Uh, let's see, you can find it in antibacterial creams and ointments, eye drops, topical creams. So there's that. Um, the, the other one that tested pretty positive was fragrance mix. That one kind of made me sad because fragrance, I mean, it makes things smell good. And I like being able to smell good and make my house smell good. And I was actually surprised at how many items have fragrance in it. But there's also a list of like a huge list of other names of fragrance. And there's a little bit on that side as well. So then it tells you like what products contain this allergen. And you know, there's a lot like soaps, perfume, obviously it says even like toothpaste, um, different household cleaners, lotions, you know, some of the obvious stuff. There's that. Another one that is similar to it is called Balsam of Peru. And that's another fragrance. And you can find that in a lot of it's basically the same kind of stuff so there's those two and the last one is benzoyl peroxide and that's found in acne medication hair dyeing bleaching stuff i don't use any of that stuff really but it's good to know oh gosh so this one has a huge list of other names for this so you can see there's this right here and then like all of those holy cow so he gave me all of this and he said so your homework for this weekend is to go through your house and find all the the stuff that has these ingredients in them and then work on getting rid of those and replacing them with other items that don't have these ingredients and then he scheduled a six week follow-up so that we could see if any of this is helping. So yeah, that was definitely a lot. Um, I went through my house and looked through every single thing that I used. So what, actually what I did first was I made a spreadsheet and on this spreadsheet, I put in every single name that these uh, ingredients have. So there's like a list of probably almost 200 different names, right? But the, the, the good thing about the spreadsheet was that I was able to look, you know, go to the, to the thing I was looking at and then I could do a search for each ingredient. Like I would, I could just type in the first few letters or something and then it would find and see if it, that ingredient was on there. So that part, it didn't take very long at all. So my findings, it was, it was definitely interesting for sure. So I took 
this paper here and I wrote down everything that I use. And if it had that ingredient in it, I would just write it below it. Um, so as far as the MI and MCI ingredients, I found it in um, my shampoo, my laundry detergent, I found it in our dish soap and our uh, dishwasher rinse aid and then some of our multi-surface cleaners. All of that had the MI ingredient in it. So actually the laundry detergent and the shampoo I had switched out a couple of weeks ago anyway, not because of that one ingredient, but it's because my allergist said, hey, you should think about switching those out for like free and clear, no dyes, no scents, anything like that. So those two were okay. Now, as far as fragrance, I didn't realize what, what items had fragrance ingredients in them. So some of them are really obvious, right? Like different soaps. Soap has the fragrance in it. Um, other things that in my house that had it are sunscreen. Didn't think about that. Hand sanitizer, toilet bowl cleaner, um, the Clorox bleach gel that I use to clean my shower. Um, even the, so I have Dawn Power Wash. It's like a spray bottle thing and I use it to clean. It's like a multi-surface cleaner basically. So I was using that. Even our dishwasher tabs have some sort of fragrance in them. So, and, and the thing about those is that on the ingredient list, sometimes it'll show like the actual ingredients of the fragrance. Um, but a lot of times I saw it just said fragrance mix or fragrance. So if it said that on there, I'm going to have to cut it out. Okay, so first off, the shampoo. I was using Head & Shoulders. Um, looking at the ingredient list, it definitely has those two big ingredients in it. So instead, I looked through Meyer and I found this brand called Kristen S, which has like no dyes, um, no other like stuff in it and that one seems to be working out pretty well uh so the head and shoulders i used has conditioner in it as well whereas the kristen s is just shampoo so i think i want to find a conditioner to go along with it because my hair it just it feels a little bit different also i was using a bar soap but now i switched over to cetaphil body wash which Oh my gosh, it has made such a difference on my skin. Like I would get out of the shower before using it and my skin would feel really itchy and I couldn't wait to get lotion on. But with this body wash, I don't feel that when getting out of the shower anymore. So I think I'm definitely sticking with this one. And I ended up buying um, Dr. Bronner's Castile Soap and I'm gonna start using that for a lot of different things. I'm going to make hand soap out of it and then I also just used it recently for a multi-surface cleaner. So I put in like two tablespoons of that soap and then uh, two cups of water into a big spray bottle. You just shake it up and then you use it like you would any other cleaner. Now this bottle, this bottle about that big, it was like $17, but two tablespoons, like it only used up a tiny bit. So I think that one bottle can go a long way. And the bottle I bought was the, the baby soap. I was looking for the regular unscented, uh, but they didn't have like the regular kind. They just had the baby kind and I figured it's gonna work. So as of right now, I have gotten rid of all the items that have the MI and MCI ingredients. And I am slowly phasing out like all of the other stuff that has the fragrance in it. It may not be all in one week, but I'm slowly going through, like I gotta buy uh, like a, a soap, hand soap dispenser so I can make my own hand soap and then look into alternatives for the other cleaners. But now I have to be really careful and read all the ingredients of the things I'm buying just to see whether it has these ingredients in it and whether they are safe for my skin. Um, I, I will say I haven't noticed a huge difference yet my skin feels a little better, but I've been using my steroid creams, so that might be why my eyes are still like red and inflamed and I'm still waking up with my eyes glued shut in the mornings and it's all crusty and I know that's TMI, I'm sorry, but it's just what's going on right now. And I will say that the, 
uh, all this stuff right here is just for my skin allergies. I had blood testing done as well and it tested for like food and then respiratory stuff. So things like outside and dust and stuff. My allergist told me with the food, like if I were to cut out every single food on that list, it would help my symptoms maybe 10%. So I'm like, let's try something else. So this is just for the skin stuff. If we go six weeks and we're not seeing any improvements, I will bring up that blood test with all the respiratory stuff and we'll see maybe if, if, it's, if it's any of that that is causing my eyes and my skin. But I'm kind of hoping that by cutting out these ingredients, I'm going to feel a whole lot better. So thank you all for <laughs> staying here, listening in, and supporting me through all of this. I'm really hoping this is going to help. If you have any insight as to like any products that you have used that has helped um, any if you're if you have allergies to that MI MCI or fragrance if you have any brands that you love please let me know because this is all new to me I'm looking for more ideas so I'll share updates as I go along um, but thank you all so much for listening for watching for all of your help I will see you guys later